Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Luke Metzger. I'm the Executive Director of Environment Texas. We're a nonprofit advocate for clean air, clean water, and open spaces. And uh, I'll be serving as the MC for today's event. Uh, we're here today because I-35 is at a crossroads. It's clearly aging and needs to be replaced. But replaced with what? Uh, TxDOT, the Texas Department of Transportation's proposal, uh, is to, for a major expansion of the highway, widening what is already considered a scar through Austin. In the process, TxDOT would seize 32 acres of land and demolish over 140 homes and businesses, including Stars Cafe uh, and, just down the road, Escuelita del Alma, a daycare where my three-year-old daughter attends. And um, right now, the expansion alone would break the promise that TxDOT made that the highway would be, highway would be no higher, no wider. And TxDOT is going the wrong way on I-35. Our speakers today represent businesses and schools set to be demolished, transportation justice advocates, equity organizations, neighbors, and local elected officials. We may have different ideas about what should be done to I-35, but we all stand united against TxDOT's boondoggle plan. We must heal the scar of I-35, not make it bigger. The community alternatives for I-35, Reconnect Austin, Rethink 35, and the Urban Land Institute's cap and stitch design need to be comprehensively studied. And we need all of our city and county officials across the region, including the council members joining us today, to stand up in opposition to this terrible plan. And this isn't just about today's generations, this is about future generations. Just a few weeks ago, the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change released a new report that they warned was code red for humanity. We know that transportation is one of the largest sources of carbon emissions in Austin. And if we're going to stop global warming, we have to stop the expansion of highways and the terrible emissions coming from the transportation sector. Now, I'm happy to turn it over to our speakers. Uh, first up, we have Austin Council Member Kathy Tovo. Good morning. I'm Austin City Council Member Kathy Tovo. I want to welcome you to District 9, which is the district I have the honor of representing. And we are all um, gathered here today for the same purpose, even as, as Luke mentioned, even if we have slightly different ideas about what needs to happen. You know, we have a tremendous opportunity in front of us. Removing I-35's upper decks and lowering the highway between Airport Avenue and Cesar Chavez offers the opportunity for transformational change here in the heart of, of Austin. It's the opportunity to transform this section of 35 from a highway that divides east and west to one that provides parks and public gathering spaces in its center, from one that prioritizes only vehicles to one that also creates safe passageway for, for pedestrians, for bicycles, for those who are pushing strollers. It's a transformative opportunity to create literal bridges over a road that is a physical manifestation of the systemic racism that governed earlier city planning efforts. And when this new highway is constructed, it too will be a symbol, a literal embodiment of what we as a community were capable of creating. It will be our legacy. If we achieve what many in the community have strived for over these years, decades really, of charrettes and analyses, this will be a legacy of healing, of ingenuity, of engineering. It's an important project, and it needs to be done well. We need these mobility improvements, and we certainly need a safer I-35. And we also need local businesses, like Escuelita del Alma, like Star Seeds behind me, and all of the, the residents, the residences that would be impacted. We need to make sure that TxDOT and the City of Austin work together to make sure that these local businesses don't disappear along with the local jobs that, are, that depend on their success. So I look forward to continuing to advocate for a transformed I-35 that reflects our community values, and I look forward to doing so along 
outside all of you. So thank you very much. Thank you to the community who has remained engaged and committed to these values. I believe we will achieve a transformational change because so many of you have been willing to roll up your sleeves and do this hard work and this meaningful work and to insist that we can do it better, and we will. Thank you very much. Good morning. I'm Austin City Council Member Greg Casar. I'm proud to be here alongside my colleagues, so many neighbors and local organizations to stand up for change here on I-35. And I represent the, the northern section of what's being proposed uh, by TxDOT. And I want to be clear. I oppose TxDOT's latest I-35 widening plan because it's wrong for our environment, it's wrong for our economy, it's wrong for our safety, and it won't even fix traffic. I want to address that, that last issue of traffic. One myth out there is that widening highways helps with traffic. But our experiences in Houston, the experience in Los Angeles, and even the experience of TxDOT's top engineer in front of the city council yesterday was that widening this highway will not build our way out of congestion. It just won't. What we can do, however, is bring forward a transformational investment that changes this wall into something that isn't just another wall, or isn't just another moat, or isn't just another car sewer that will get filled up with traffic. People here, no, not a single person here is advocating for the I-35 you have here. But what we're advocating for is something so much better. We can create space for people to live and play in, we can support transit, we can protect our environment, and we can reconnect our neighborhoods. And so that's why it's so important for our entire community to come together and say no to TxDOT's current widening and say yes to the plans being brought forward by the community. Because we can get people in Austin around safer from north to south and from east to west without relying on an outdated 1970s model that really only benefits the big construction contractors and people building more and more housing way out on the edges of our city. We can do much better than that. A second myth I want to address is it's been raised that if we don't widen I-35 and tear down beloved businesses and child care centers, that it's just going to push traffic out into our community. That's a false choice. We shouldn't have to harm our local businesses, harm our economy, or harm our neighborhoods. We can build an I-35 that is much better, that is much safer, that is much more efficient, reconnect our communities, and invest in the transit and transportation infrastructure in our neighborhoods so that we're all better off. And that's what folks are advocating for here today. No higher, no wider, but much better. And that's something that I know that Austin is committed to because this isn't just a cut through, scar through our city. This is the heart of our city and we should do right by it. So I ask the community to join together to oppose this latest plan from TxDOT. Say no wider and no higher, but that we can do so much better. Thank you. And uh, next up, we have Mayor Pro Tem Natasha Harper Madison. Good morning. My name is Natasha Harper Madison. I get the honor of being the Mayor Pro Tem in the city of Austin, uh, the place where I was born and raised. I, uh, I'm looking out at this at this thing here, and it and it means a lot to a lot of us, and and more to some of us than others. This stretch of highway right here. This is the deadliest roadway we have in Austin. It is the physical manifestation of a segregationist past and segregationist policies. It's the poster child of car-choked mobility systems. It pumps countless tons of carbon and pollutants every single year into the air we breathe. And right now, right now, TxDOT thinks the best way to build I-35 is to build more I-35. On the same day the department showed us its latest proposals for this highway, the United Nations issued a block Buster report. It warned us that time is quickly running out to take the kind of meaningful action that will prevent the worst case scenarios of climate change. Just this year alone, we've seen a monster hurricane in the east, out of control fires in the west, and a catastrophic winter storm 
right here in the capital city of Texas. These outcomes are going to get worse and their impacts are going to fall disproportionately harder on black and brown and lower income families and communities. Those are the same communities that have historically been hurt by big urban highway investments. I'd like to think that we're past that point in our history, but TxDOT's top-down approach is still relying on the same outdated play from the same outdated playbook. When you add more space for cars, more cars will always, always fill up that space. Once again, they're proposing to take the space for people and give it to cars. They want to displace scores of businesses and residences, run 20 lanes of freeway throughout downtown Austin, and for what? Yesterday, they told us it won't even provide meaningful congestion relief. We're talking about a $5 billion project that will cause a decade of displacement and disruption. And on day one, it could be even more congested than it is right now. Something needs to be done about I-35, but the final plan needs to be no wider and no higher than what we have right now. It needs to reflect our community's values when it comes to mobility, safety, carbon emissions, and reconnecting our very fragile and fractured communities. And the final plan needs to, needs to do more than just pay lip service to transit. It needs to complement rather than compete with our Project Connect investments. That community-vetted, voter-approved plan includes a historic sum to prevent displacement and not cause more of it. Like Project Connect, whatever we decide to do with I-35 will be a decision that our kids and our grandkids will have to live with. Will they look at this roadway in 50 years and see it like we do? as one big, loud mistake? Or will they be proud of progressive, forward-looking choices that we made? We only have one shot at this, so let's make sure we get it right. I appreciate y'all coming out this morning. Next up is Council Member Paige Ellis. Thank you very much. I'm very pleased to be joining with you today for this uh, fantastic event. I love the turnout that we're seeing from all of y'all. I am Councilmember Paige Ellis, and I am fortunate to represent District 8 Southwest Austin, home of Barton Springs and the Green Belt. We care very much about the environment. I'm also the city's delegate to the Clean Air Coalition of CAPCOG. A few years back when I worked on Proposition B, the Safe Mobility Bond, with my policy director, Julie Montgomery, who's here with us today, we did that with a vision of making sure that our city could be compact, connected, and that the people who live, work, and play here have clean air. We obviously need better mobility options. That's why you saw Project Connect pass with flying colors. You saw Prop B pass with flying colors. That's because our community stood together and said, we are tired of sitting in traffic. It's not good for the environment. It's certainly not good for the businesses, homes, and schools that are near I-35. As Luke said, he has a child who goes to daycare here, right alongside this highway. And it is just not right to make our brothers and sisters that live in Central and East Austin live with the burden of trying to get across this highway. We have Vision Zero in the city of Austin. TxDOT itself has hashtag end the streak. It's in all of their emails. If you've ever spoken with folks from TxDOT via email, you will see hashtag end the streak. I don't think the plan that's been presented to us, the two alternatives that they have identified, are going to accomplish that task. Our community is asking for clean air. They want to walk, bike, stroll, and roll their way through town in green spaces with trees. What we don't need is end-to-end -end concrete. What we don't need is to spend our lives sitting in traffic. Thank you very much, and I'm so glad you all could join us today. I want to also point out uh, the pink line here everyone can see. Uh, this represents the amount of land that will, be, uh, will have to be taken and demolished uh, if TxDOT's plan is, uh, goes through. And you can see it goes all the way up 
uh, would go into the building. So we were talking about a huge amount of land that would be lost uh, to, to meet their plans. Um, so now I'd like to introduce Sin Sinclair Black, the founder of Reconnect Austin. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here. No wider, no higher. That's all you need to know. That was a promise made. We'll make them stick to it. I'm going to let Hayden speak from now on uh, because she's got a voice that carries I don't. Morning, everyone. I'm Hayden Black Walker with Reconnect Austin, and this is Sinclair Black, if you couldn't hear him um, earlier. Uh, we really appreciate everybody being here. Really want to thank the council members for taking time out of their very, very busy schedules for being here. Um, they had a, yes, definitely. They um, had a work session yesterday where they got to hear directly from TxDOT and from their own staff, and that was really powerful, and I really appreciate that. I pre especially appreciate council member Ellis for calling that work session. Um, and getting getting that testimony um, so that the, so that everyone could listen to it. Also, want to thank Stars Cafe for hosting today. Um, very much appreciate it. Um, <laughs> as Luke said, we have this line that shows how the building will be taken. There's also a line at the back if you walk around after the press conference of pink tape that shows you exactly how far. It's 107 feet from this curb to where they're going to take um, highway. So all of this would be highway back to the back alley behind the building. So for a decade, Reconnect Austin's been calling for a narrow footprint, better east-west connectivity, and restoring the city at the surface. This project does not do that. We continue to ask for Reconnect to be included in the environmental review. Let's bring housing and jobs back to Austin instead of bulldozing existing local businesses and homes. We have a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to get this right. Thank you. Next up, Adam Greenfield with uh, Rethink 35. Good morning, everyone. Great to be here. Thank you so much for coming. Austin is an amazing place. It is a beautiful city. We have everything here. We are so lucky to live here. And we have I-35, uh, a dangerous, polluting dead zone in the heart of what should be thriving, bustling neighborhoods. In other Texas cities, I-35 runs around town. And if you want to go through town, you go down the boulevard, you go down the main street. That's how it should have been here. Ramming I-35 through Austin, through the heart of Austin, was a mistake. Now, TxDOT proposes to double down on that mistake and widen I-35. That is absurd. As Council Member Kassar said earlier, other people said earlier, widening highways doesn't work. It just encourages more driving. No city needs an interstate highway running through its downtown, and we don't either. So let's take it out. It's time to remove I-35 through Austin altogether and replace it with a boulevard. with homes, businesses, music venues, 30-minute train rides to San Antonio where you never have to worry about congestion ever again. No more congestion. So this can be done. It has been done. Other cities have been removing their freeways for decades. Some are doing it right now. Rochester, New York is doing it right now. Freeway removal has worked every single time, without exception. It will work here, and because we're Austin, we're going to do it better than those other cities did. So, we can let TxDOT keep making the same mistakes, or we can create a spectacular boulevard, a place that's uniquely Austin. Nobody's excited about TxDOT's proposals, let's face it. This is change to get excited about. Austin City Council, thank you for being here. When you stand up to TxDOT and fight for this, we will stand with you. People of Austin, join us, join Rethink, join Rethink 35. Let's come together. We can do this. Next up. We have Nelson Linder, uh, president of the NAACP Austin branch. Let me first say good morning. I'm always honored to be here. 
a couple of things. Transportation is also a civil rights issue. That's important. You can hear and see here the disruption, the destruction, but also the legacy of reinforcing racial segregation, discrimination, displacement for black and brown people. This is an enormous opportunity, but people should be the center of this conversation because that's a disparate impact. If we are going to impact on people that are brown and black, we only have a legal basis, we have a, a moral basis to take this thing in a different direction. Let's be very, very clear. You can't separate I-35 from the racial inequality, inequity, and displacement in this city. So as a result, we have an obligation in this city to make sure the folks who live here now, who didn't create this barrier, we have the opportunity to, to, to find a city that respects its people, its legacy, its treatment, its division, where all of our children, because we won't be here, can live in peace, with respect, and create a city that will address racial inequality, racial discrimination, intimidation. So folks, this is a very serious issue. And I'm making it very, very clear. Let's also add the idea of, of civil rights to make sure that black and brown people, and poor people also, are still peace because that carries a lot of weight legally. And I can assure you, if we add that to the conversation as a community, because right now, what are we talking about? Equity and fairness, right? So if you're gonna design this obstacle here, this behemoth here, make sure it reinforces those ideas of a new city comprised of a racial democratic idea where all of us can respect each other, live in peace, and I have to embrace another legacy of racism, white supremacy, and discrimination. Thank you very much. Next up is Jim Walker, board president of the Cherrywood Neighborhood Association. Thank you, Luke. My name is Jim Walker, uh, chair of the Cherrywood Neighborhood Association. Welcome to Cherrywood. This is, if you're a resident of Cherrywood here this morning, raise your hand and wave hello. So I-35 forms a mile-long western boundary for the Cherrywood Neighborhood Association. Uh, almost all of us who live here today moved in while the upper decks were here, so we know what we're living next to, which is why we are so concerned about the design of it and that it works, not only for our neighborhood, but for the entire city. Many of us have been, actually been involved with TxDOT. This is the third round of being involved with TxDOT, along with the North Central Coalition of Neighborhoods uh, in this whole stretch. And while much in the city has changed, it doesn't seem like much about TxDOT's approach has changed, and that's kind of the problem. And over the last year, especially, the process kind of led us to have higher hopes that it would be a little bit different this time. And really, all we're kind of asking for in that is more creativity from TxDOT along all the lines that you've heard to come back to these designs that go through the middle of our city. It takes a little bit more effort. It's worth it. Whether you're going through Austin, Houston, or Dallas, a little bit more effort, a little bit more cost might be needed, but that, these are our major vibrant cities. So this is, this is why you have to put in a little bit more work, and we're willing to be there with that work. Um, our concerns for Cherrywood fall into three kind of major areas, accessibility uh, to the, the frontage road and, and across the interstate, along the interstate, we want safety for all modes of travel. Land use is another big concern of ours for the existing businesses that are here that you're gonna hear from here in a moment, but also the future business opportunities on whatever the new frontage road is like, right? It's still part of our neighborhood no matter what happens here. And the third area is the social impacts of this freeway. Uh, Nelson talked about them straight up. Mayor Pro Tem talked about them. You know, we stand aligned with those broader equity social impacts that this project represents. So uh, thank you for visiting Cherrywood. It's a great neighborhood. Thank you for being here today, and we'll see you uh, as this continues. Thank you. Uh, next up is Shannon Sedwick, owner of Stars Cafe, right behind us. Hi, everybody. I'm Shannon Sedwick. Stars Cafe is also known as Star Seeds Cafe. We have signs to prove both names. It's been around since, oh, over the time that I've been in town, and I've been in town since uh, 1968. Uh, it's been a neighborhood staple, and, and it continues to be a mainstay of Austin diner philosophy. TxDOT does not need to take away our special places without even talking to us. 
We want the neighborhood to have a voice. And I have some words from Ora Houston, who is a friend of mine and who has been on the east side, been a council member too in the, in the past. She had some very wise things to say, so I thought I'd just read her speech. Real justice, creativity, and innovation require solutions to transit problems which don't begin and end with more of East Austin erased. The answer to congestion is not additional lanes through the center of Austin. The answer to congestion is usage of Toll Road 130, which is wide open and ready to receive all the through truck and vehicle traffic which was supposed to be rerouted from IH-35 when it was constructed. <laughs> TxDOT should remove the tolls and reroute the through traffic, period. Thank you. Next up, Jaime Cano uh, from Escolita del Alma. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Jaime Cano. I am one of the assistant directors at Escuelita del Alma Preschool. Um, I wanna thank everybody for being here today, all of the speakers and all of the attendees for allowing us the platform to discuss and express our opposition for the proposed text out expansion of I-35. Right now, I would like to read a statement on behalf of our school and our community. If TxDOT proceeds with the proposed highway expansion along this corridor, Escuelita del Alma Child Care Center will be forced to close its doors after 21 years of caring for and educating young children. And as a result, 200 families will lose their trusted child care center, which would then add to the already severe shortage of quality child care centers in the city. And as a city, we cannot afford to lose more schools dedicated to the education and care of young children. This is all happening amidst a nationally increasing lack of childcare centers due to the ravaging economic effects of the COVID pandemic. This loss of Escuelita del Alma in this much needed central location would require our community to find an alternative space which has ample square footage and can accommodate that many students. In this current real estate market, it will not be possible to find a facility that is affordable or even reasonably priced. Moreover, this would be the second time our school and community will be forced and displaced, forced to move due to unsustainably rapid growth and development over legacy philosophy in this city. This represents the city's severe lack of community impact research and investigation and shows little to no consideration for what the residents and business owners of this city want and need. We represent just one of many businesses and neighborhoods that will ne be negatively impacted by this change. Right now, I would like to present you all with a parent and community member and resident of this neighborhood. His name is Matt Rutledge. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Matt Rutledge, and I'm here today because I'm concerned about the TxDOT I-35 expansion plan. I'm a resident of Cherrywood. I live about 300 feet from here on Robinson Avenue, and I'm a parent of two children at, at Escalita del Alma. My wife and I purchased our home in 2014, and we were drawn to this neighborhood because of its accessibility, walkability, and at the time, its affordability. I was not stoked to live one block off of I-35, but our house checked a lot of boxes for us. Austin has checked a lot of boxes for us. Austin has changed a lot in the past seven years and it's going to continue to change. It is a city that is, has a big draw. We are considered a progressive, forward-thinking bunch of people. Let's get progressive and forward-thinking with our solution to this problem. We do not want an outdated, ineffective resolution. We are in this mess because of poor planning, if you kick out the residents and small businesses, you tear down the buildings and their homes, you pave more lanes, you get more traffic, plain and simple. These proposed solutions are already not enough. There's only one chance to get this right. Every city that I've ever been to has a business or local route and an express route that bypasses the city. Why does TxDOT feel that it makes sense to have a corridor that runs right through the capital city? It's ugly, it harms our environment and the people that choose to live here and it's a poor use of some of our most valuable property. 
as far as I'm concerned, if you do not live here, you do not get to clog our roads. We should be routing people that are passing through and making traffic worse around Austin via 130. I-35 should be a toll road for anybody that does not live in Austin, and 130 should be the toll-free route. Again, we only have one chance to make this right. It really breaks my heart to think that Escalia de Ama could be displaced by the city of Austin yet again. The daycare and preschool is an institution that not only to not only Cherrywood, but to central Austin and beyond. There are over 200 families with children here with the real estate market and the requirements that are placed upon them because they are a child care center. Um, this is a real existential threat to a small business owned by a woman of color. Finding a daycare where you are confident that they have your children's best interests in mind is not easy. Escalita is an extension of our family. They are raising our kids, teaching them about respect, understanding, diversity, all within a Spanish immersion format. There's only one chance to get this right. I repeat again, there's only one chance to get this right. My request is that TechStop please consider more creative, progressive solutions. Thank you. Okay, we have three speakers left. Uh, next up is Jake Crossley from Central Texas Families for Safe Streets. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jay Blazek Crossley, Executive Director of Farm and City and Director of Vision Zero Texas. Uh, but today I'm standing here on behalf of the members of Central Texas Families for Safe Streets who volunteer their time so other families don't have to suffer from traffic crashes as theirs have. Every year this section of I-35 and frontage roads takes about 10 people's lives and leaves about 50 more suffering from life-altering serious injuries. Crashes are a much bigger problem than congestion across the strait and right here on this freeway. The Texas Transportation Commission has committed TxDOT Austin, like every district, to reducing traffic deaths in half by 2035 and eliminating traffic deaths by 2050. It is not inevitable that every year 10 families will suffer one of the worst days of their lives because something went wrong when their loved one was running an errand on I-35, coming home from work, or trying to walk across from east to west. We demand TxDOT figure out how to spend $5 billion fixing this broken freeway without assuming that families will have to keep paying for the failings of our transportation system with their loved ones' lives and limbs. The I-35 EIS process needs to include real safety analysis, comparing the community proposals, the freeway widening proposal, and the deadly situation we have today. All proposals will not be finished until we figure out how to fix I-35 to not be the deadly mistake that stands before us. Thank you. And our final speaker today is Yasmin Smith, board member from People United for Mobility Action, Puma. Um, bring us home, Jas Yasmin. Good morning. Oh, we can do better than that. Good morning. Good morning. There it is. Come on. All right. My name is Yasmin Smith, born and raised Austinite and chair for Puma, People United for Mobility Action, where we're dedicated to transforming Austin so that every person has access to safe, affordable, and convenient choices to get around and meet their daily needs. And we are here, we're here to advocate on behalf of vulnerable populations that are usually disregarded, disadvantaged, and quite simply put, harmed by the transportation and infrastructure decisions of our city. In order to be the Austin that Austinites deserve, we must recognize this moment for what it truly is an opportunity. An opportunity to acknowledge, prioritize, and evolve. An opportunity to create a better Austin. We must acknowledge, we must acknowledge the long-standing disproportionate racial and economic impacts exasperated by the original construction of I-35, which created permanent state-funded infrastructure to support not only Jim Crow, but segregationist policies. We must prioritize the voices of the underrepresented, marginalized, and historically oppressed and in doing so, prioritize their health and safety, no matter their unique vulnerability, whether it is the color of their skin or the lack of secure housing. This means the new I-35 project must be designed and built to improve safety, mobility, and access for all people. Whether they are driving, walking, biking, taking transit, or just living their lives along I-35, and it must be no wider or higher than it currently is. We must evolve. Then come on, we must evolve. We must evolve in our design 
uh, with this project and design it with equity in mind and learn from previous mistakes in transportation so as to not erect new barriers separating parts of our town with disproportionate burdens placed upon low-income communities and communities of color. We must evolve in our transparency. We must ensure that there is a racial equity lens framework TxDOT will use to evaluate the alternatives for this project. And TxDOT should have a minimum of 180 days of public comment for all future comment periods. We must evolve by thinking about tomorrow today and push for any future created land to be locally owned and used for the maximum community benefit. And we must evolve by funding the future. Anti-displacement is part of the new standard. Thinking about anti-displacement is part of the new standard of due diligence when it comes to infrastructure and transportation, and there must be money allocated in its budget in order to succeed. My name is Yasmin Smith, chair of Puma, People United for Mobility Action, and we are here well, we're here to fight like hell to ensure that those that have historically been silenced are represented in every nook and cranny of this here project. Thank you. Great, thank you everybody. Um, we are going to do a group photo. If everyone wants to kind of join, come up, stand behind the podium, please. Uh, audience members, everybody, please join up. We're gonna do a photo. And then for members of the press, we're happy to do one-on-one -on -one interviews immediately after. Just a reminder and conclusion that you've heard lots of different ideas today about what to do with I-35. Uh, what is clear, though, is that we all agree that TxDOT's plan is a mistake, that they need to live up to their promise to not build, make it any higher or wider. Uh, so thank you so much. We'll do the photo, and then happy to do questions.